Greetings. This is the Timeshare Traveler. Today is episode 217, 217. When Marriott Vacation Club is my favorite timeshare. I call it part two because I'm doing an alphabetic order. I did uh, Hilton Grand Vacations as my favorite, and but I want to tell you why or when Marriott is my favorite timeshare. And here's the overview. Really, it's all about high, high quality and luxury when, when you're at a Marriott Vacation Club. Um, the other thing is I'll talk about high availability, which is definitely a trade. And the locations where they have the properties are not everywhere, but where there's typically where the high-end locations. And, I, and there's special perks that I have as a, um, one of the just entry-level premier groups. And bottom line is quality is expensive, and you'll see that in the maintenance fees. So before I dive into detail, let me give you about 28 seconds. I'll tell you a little bit about my channel, and I'll be right back to tell you all about it. Hi, this is Cliff and I'm the Timeshare Traveler. Welcome to my channel. The purpose of my channel is to educate those who love traveling in timeshares. I've been an owner, owner for 15 plus years at uh, timeshare ownership. I have elite ownership with Marriott, Hilton, and Worldmark. I have a, published over 100 timeshare video reviews and I've published over 95 timeshare tips. I can be found on Facebook at Timeshare Trav, or Twitter, Timeshare Trav, and on the web at www.timesharetraveler.com. I'm back. Yeah. So it's all about, to me, Marriott is high quality luxury. And, and like I say, the price is commensurate with that. But I come from a fairly simple background. So when I, when I go to Marriott, it's, it's always a treat uh, for me. Um, and like I say, at the bottom there, I feel like I'm always splurging when I go to Marriott. It's a moment of luxury, and I feel like I'm spoiling myself. But, you know, I've worked hard for all these years, and so uh, I don't feel bad uh, taking advantage of what I've worked for. So here's the bottom. Here's the bottom line: all Marriott locations are high end. Marriott vacation clubs exude luxury, um, and I'll go into a little more of that, that that detail. I even think a little higher, but maybe that's debatable. Um, is the Western clubs? Um, and I, maybe the Marriott people would think otherwise. Um, but if you really want to step up, um, go to the Ritz-Carlton Resorts. We're going to have marble countertops and amazing, amazing things. Um, complimentary French press coffee in the morning. Uh, just pampering at its finest. And there, um, there are very few of those, but I've enjoyed the one in San Francisco in particular. Um, and then there's Sheraton Clubs, which I, I'd say a little bit below. Uh, but they're still excellent. Um, so I find that, that all of the sort of brand that's in the bound, uh, the Marriott Vacation Club, are all excellent. And like I say, I view that I feel like I'm splurging when I'm there. So there you go, high quality and luxury. That's what, that's when I want to feel that. That's when Marriott Vacations is my favorite timeshare. The next piece that actually goes with that is high availability. So it's one thing if you have high quality and all that, but if you can't get into it, that's really struggling. And I'm not saying you can book it like in the last week or anything like that. Um, uh, particularly like in a city in San Francisco, I've had a little trouble getting into the Ritz Carlton, but not within a six month window. It's more within a one or two month window. Um, and again, I really have difficulty booking resorts even within a six month window, which is when you get the Ritz Carlton's and some of the others. Um, you know, I may not get the view exactly the way I want it. I may not be able to everything, but I usually can get the, into the resort I want or one that's close by. Like there's three in Kauai, and they're all like within a mile of each other. And um, actually, there's four, and they're all within a mile or so of each other. Uh, s some of them on Poipu area, and one's a Sheraton, and two are uh, Marriotts. And I can get into one of those normally. Um, uh, again, I've stayed on all all properties in Kauai, but one next to the Sheraton. So I've been to the Sheraton, so didn't think sitting, and then one next to it wasn't there. Uh, I've stayed on all the Maui and uh, Big Island resorts, and they all have amazing uh, beach access. That's what I would say. So it's high availability, high quality, um, and you do pay the price for that. But again, it's luxury, and when you feel like luxury, I ho I own not a lot of Marriott, but enough to have uh, allow myself to splurge from time to time. The other thing about the Merrick Vacation Clubs and all of them in Inbound, they tend to be at what I call high-end locations. So they're not in, you know, it's, it's not in, I don't want to pick on any city, it's not in a small town-ish, uh, um, it's usually in a large metro area or right on the beach or right on the water, uh, or right on an attraction, um, so like that. So I don't want to pick on anything in particular make, um, to discourage anyone from anything. But anyway, 
I like they're in Hawaii. They're in uh, all the islands. I haven't stayed on the ones on uh, Oahu, but I'm not a big fan of Oahu. I prefer to be on the outer islands, as they're, I think they're called. Lake Tahoe, amazing, right at the right, right by the casinos and right at the base of the ski slope. Very amazing. They're just amazing. Um, and I haven't stayed at the Ritz Carlton one. It's uh, but I want to. That's one of my other ones. That actually, it has been a little difficult to get in, but I haven't really tried to book it way in advance. Um, Big cities like San Francisco, Los Angeles, which is really Newport Beach um, Resort. Um, you have Las Vegas and Orlando, which are key destinations, and et cetera. So that gives you a flavor for the locations. Um, the other thing that's a little unique about uh, the Merritt Vacation Club um, that I don't see as much with the sort of Hilton and or um, the World Mark is they have significant services. Um, most, if not, I'm trying to think of any that don't have a restaurant um, as far as a vacation club. Um, so there might be a few Sheratons that don't, but I'm pretty sure they all do. Um, and they have restaurants and bars on uh, premise. Um, the level of pools is amazing, fitness centers, and they're usually, if they're at the ocean, they're right on the water or looking over the water, something like that. So again, the locations are really spectacular where they actually put the, the the properties and so the the one Marriott in Las Vegas is right on this right on this strip or just just off okay perks that matter to me with I'm at the first level of the premium tiers and that allows me a platinum access to all at all Marriott hotels why that matters to me I get free executive lounge access uh, with ones that don't have the breakfast and that gives me an executive lounge gives me the free breakfast in the afternoon hot food or early evening um, and I often get free upgrades into I'll get upgraded into a suite if they're available because of my uh, status um, other thing is access to interval international that matters to me because they actually own uh, interval international and there's high-end resorts that you can get at reduced prices particularly if it's the off season or kind of not in the last minute there'll be excess inventory that you put in there um, I own Worldmark as well, which I'll talk about in another video. And I can actually use, in, they have access to intervals, so I can get actually use Worldmark credits to stay at Marriott locations for less money, obviously off more off-peak than I can using my Marriott. So I can do an upgrade. Um, the other thing is they don't, less so, they don't have a lot of, not a lot of transaction fees like some of the other um, um, properties. You're paying a premium, so that those usually have the services thrown in. So those are the perks that matter to me. And now let me talk about the costs. Okay. okay, quality is expensive. So here again, I use Marriott. It's kind of, I don't have a lot of Marriott relative to my other timeshares, but I use that as sort of my um, high end perk, you know, but it's expensive, you know, charges premium rates. Um, it's still cheaper using the maintenance fees than if you actually rented the properties, like going to the um, uh, Marriott.com or using Bonvoy points is cheaper to, cheaper to use that. Um, but the amenities are world class. Studio, you can see, goes from the low season. It's over $123. And sometimes I would say it's about twice the price of a Hilton. It's not, not every category, but that's in general what you see. And again, the one bedroom, 164 a night to 315 a night, um, which is significant. Um, but if you're in Hawaii, uh, having a one-bedroom Hawaii in Hawaii on the right on the water is definitely not if you were in a hotel Definitely, it's gonna be more like $800. So it's definitely cheaper than doing that and again a two-bedroom Which you can't really get in a hotel is $250 at the low end and $500 at the high end again You can add into that if you want to have like oceanfront two-bedroom, you know, there's there there are higher levels, but there's a generic level again Quality is expensive, so from my perspective, when I view it as my favorite, it's when I'm saying, okay, it's time now for me to splurge, you know, have a special event or something like that, or I want to have a family reunion or something like that where I want to get people together and have a, a moment of luxury and pamper myself. So that's what I view Marriott. I have a higher percentage of timeshares elsewhere, but I use this more as a pampering. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to give me... Uh, like the video and if you haven't subscribed don't forget to subscribe